So we've got some thin copper, some thick copper, some silver and some brass and they've all been annealed ten times, same as before in the first video and now I'm going to try and reticulate the brass. the whole thing. And then as soon as it starts to go a bit shimmery, move to a different area. It's already starting to crinkle in the corner. I think it's gone quite nice. Mm. Oh yeah. Just giving it that little second so it cools, and then you can see the areas that have moved and the areas that are still fairly untextured. Starting to crinkle? Yeah. yeah. That bit's gone now. Yeah. Looks Maybe good. A little bit. Back this is where it will be prone to burning through and melting, so I'm right on the edge. That wasn't hot enough, I'll back in. That got it? Yeah. So it's really, really, really tarnished after it's been dunked in the cold water. I'm going to pop it in the pickle, leave it for a few minutes to top that up until all the black oxides have gone, and then give it a scrub with the brass brush. Thin bit of copper, 0.5 mil, thick bit, 1.2 mil. Same as before, I've been annealed, cooled and cleaned 10 times, and now I'm just going to blast them. And as soon as you see that sort of sheen to it, shimmery sheen, you move. Partly because it's copper and partly because of the thickness, it's way less prone to burning a hole through it, unlike the silver and the brass. But because it's so thick, it's really difficult to see. With the thinner metals, you take the heat off and you can see straight away the texture is developing because it's thick. It's staying red and you can't quite see what's going on. is the one that in theory shouldn't work anyway because it's not an alloy The thicker bit it seems to be developing the texture and moving nicely when the heat's on it. So if I angle it, you can see it's building up ridges and fatter areas and thinner areas. But it's as soon as I take the torch off, it's almost like it levels out again. Yeah. It's got a little bit of a crinkle to it. Oh, there you go. You can see a little bit there. Yeah. I might move on to the um, thinner one.
after all these years, I'm always amazed how easy it is to melt things when you don't want to. <laughs> <laughs> and then how much you can abuse them when you're doing stuff like this. Yeah. Hypnotic when it starts. Yeah, flowing like that. Yeah. That one's come away alright, but it's not unusual because they get so hot to be stuck to the brick. Normally, if you're not impatient, just leave it to cool. It will release on its own accord. If you do force it off, you run the risk of taking half the brick with you, but that will chip off. Um, another thing is, with any of the metals, but brass in particular and copper as well, if it gets too hot, it burns through at that point. Um, but that can give some nice effects, but it's fine, I'm just going to cool it. Put in the pickle pot, but I can fish out what's already in there. Pop those in between. This was the bit of brass. Scrub. And the texture starts to appear and you get a nice shine on it. I think for brass that's pit that's good. Good and good, isn't it? So but it definitely like, took long yeah, less control than silver, isn't it? When I did it, I got holes in it. How did you not get holes in the brass? Yeah. Yeah, keep the torch moving. If areas get too hot, they burn through. Same as that little bit of copper a second ago. Like with a lot of the techniques, um, there's a lot of conflicting advice and information. So some people like to use a big torch and keep it moving at all times. Other people like to use a really, really small torch and just focus on tiny That's areas at a time. But then the problem with that is, um, if you can't keep the rest of your metal at the temperature, a little torch isn't always hot enough to get bits to flow. So the smaller the piece you're working on, the smaller the torch you can get away with using. Other people like to hold the torch static in certain areas and then as soon as it flows take it away and move to another okay. area um, so I think it's just a matter of experimenting and see what works for you because like I say with the base metal some people insist you have to flux them other people say don't flux them some people say you need to anneal and clean them other people say you need to build up a layer of tarnish um, that looks lovely that's come out nice